The integral of e to the negative x squared is incredibly important, yet, ironically, it has no solution. If we integrate this from negative infinity to positive infinity, we'll find that the area between this line and the x-axis is the square root of pi. Crazy, right? We took a function with e, an irrational number, we evaluated it at infinity, a concept that's not a real number, and somehow we got the square root of pi, a completely different irrational number. I'm going to attempt to present this proof as visually as possible, and as I do so, I want you to figure out why this particular equation relates to pi. The first step I want to take is to rotate this 90 degrees. As I said, infinity isn't a real number, so it's easier to evaluate this function from 0 to 1. The equation for this is the square root of the ln of 1 over 1 minus x. This should be easy to show by using algebra. If we say that the original integral is equal to i, this new integral is i halves. That's because ln is only positive, so we're only counting the top half. At this point, you could try many methods to solve this integral, but I'm going to spoil the fun. There is no answer. We don't know how to integrate this. But what we do know how to integrate is the ln of x, so it seems like a good idea to find i squared. Back to the original equation. If y equals x and dy equals dx, we can get that i equals the integral of e to the negative y squared. Let's multiply these two together. On the left side, we have i squared. On the right side, we have the product of the two integrals. Hey, here's a cool trick. In general, a constant times the integral of a function is equal to the integral of the constant times the function. In this case, e to the negative y squared is a constant relative to x. That means that when x changes, e to the negative y squared stays the same, or as we said, it stays constant. Thus, we can treat it like a constant and apply the aforementioned rule. This new double integral is telling us to find the volume underneath e to the negative x squared minus y squared between x equals negative infinity and positive infinity, and between y equals negative infinity and positive infinity. In other words, finding the volume underneath the entire thing. There's a neat trick called the washer method. Let's draw a circle around the figure. Now let's imagine that we're stacking on top of each other an infinite amount of circles. In other words, imagine you have a segment of radius r that's sweeping around in a circle. Now pi r squared finds the area. If you integrate all possible values of r, you're adding the areas of every circle to make up the volume of the solid. Looking at the graph from earlier, if we were to spin it around the x-axis, we would be getting the shape on the left. That means that the y value at any given point on the right corresponds to the radius of some circle on the left. Let's then square y and multiply it by pi. That will be a function of the area. Now thankfully, we've gotten rid of the square root and we can now use the normal integrating skills. Finally, we get that the volume is equal to pi. That's equal to the double integral, which is equal to i squared. So that means that i is then equal to the square root of pi. At the beginning, I asked why pi was in the answer to this particular problem. Well, here's the answer. It's because of the x squared. The x squared, why is that so important? Well, when we got the equation of e to the negative x squared plus y squared, we had an appearance of x squared plus y squared. The equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, so the equation could have been rewritten as e to the negative r squared. If your z value is dependent on some radius, you know that you can draw a circle at any height. If we instead took the equation of e to the negative x to the fourth minus y to the fourth, you can't simplify this in terms of r, so you cannot draw a circle at any point. Instead, it creates this weird shape that I'm going to call a curvy square. The unit curvy square has an area of 3.708149354. I'll call that the curvy square constant. That means that taking the integral of e to the negative x to the fourth from negative infinity to positive infinity would result in some variation of the curvy square constant instead of pi. So really, it's to some extent just a crazy coincidence that pi is in the answer at all.